like to call this meeting of the Monroe County Plan Commission to order. Um, Ms. Nestor Jellen, if you would be so kind as to call the roll. Yes, let me go ahead and call the roll. John Enright Randolph. Here. Bernie Garitas. Here. Jeff Morris. Here. Cheryl Munson. Here. Edward Ullman. Here. Dee Owens. Jerry Pittsford. <laughs> Here. Julie Thomas. Here. Margaret Clemens. Here. Chris Cockrum. Here. Okay, so we have eight members and a city representative non-voting member and a quorum. Okay, is there a motion to introduce the evidence? So moved. moved. Second. <laughs> I'll introduce the following items into the evidence. The Monroe County Zoning Ordinance as adopted and amended. The Monroe County Comprehensive Plan as adopted and amended. The Monroe County Subdivision Control Ordinance as adopted and amended. The Monroe County Plan Commission Rules of Procedure as adopted and amended. And the cases that were legally advertised and scheduled for a hearing on tonight's agenda. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to introduce the evidence. A vote in favor is a vote to approve. Ber Bernie Garitas? Yes. Jeff Morris? Yes. Cheryl Munson? Yes. Edward Ullman? Jerry Pittsford? Yes. Julie Thomas? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Sean Enright Randolph? Yes. Okay, motion carries eight to zero. And as we announced earlier, the agenda has been amended. Certain items have been continued. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended? Okay. Second. All right, to approve the agenda is a yes vote. Jeff Morris? Yes. Cheryl Munson? Yes. Edward Ullman? Jerry Pittsford? Yes. Julie Thomas? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Sean Enright Randolph? Yes. Bernie Caritas? Yes. Okay, motion carries eight to zero. And there are two minutes, sets of minutes on the agenda for approval. Would anyone like to make a motion to either approve those together or separately? I'll make a motion to approve both sets of minutes minutes from August 15, 2023 and minutes from September 19, 2023. Second. Okay, this is a motion to approve both the minutes from August 15th and September 19th, 2023. A vote in favor is a vote to approve. Cheryl Munson? Yes. Edward Ullman? Yes. Jerry Pittsford? Yes. Julie Thomas? Yes. Margaret Clemens? Yes. Sean Enright Randolph? Yes. Bertie Garitas? Yes. Jeff Morris? Yes. Okay, minutes are approved, eight to zero. Okay, the first item on our agenda tonight is under administrative business, and this is concerning VAR-23-40, and this is the herd refund request for variance from Chapter 833. Um, staff, would you like to uh, review this with us? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I'll keep this brief. So this is a refund request for the total filing fee for a variance, which is $208.50. This was for a, a design standard variance from the rear yard setback. Uh, this is for property 511 South Village Drive. Um, so the petitioner had a residential building permit in 2017, and at that time, um, it was discovered that there was an elevated deck that hadn't been permitted. Um, there was uh, an error by the zoning inspector at the time which allowed the deck to be included in that permit that they applied for. That deck was no, is still subject to uh, setbacks and it was built with an encroachment into the rear yard. This was discovered um, because in 2020, their permit, their building permit expired in 2019, their ILP expired in 2020. They kept working, their addition wasn't done. Um, they continued to have building inspections, but didn't have a valid permit. Uh, just this year in October, they came to us for, they came to the building department for a uh, final electrical inspection and was found out that they no longer had a valid permit that they needed to reapply. And upon doing so, planning staff found that that deck is encroaching and does require, um, is, is still subject to setbacks. 
Um, so the petitioner of, did apply for variance. It was actually heard last week at the December 6th BZA meeting and was approved for 4-0 to allow that deck to remain in the, with a six foot encroachment. Uh, no, to have a six foot setback from the rear yard. Um, so the petitioner's requesting a full uh, refund request for that total cost. Um, staff supports a refund of $100 and you can find their um, letter for request. And I'm gonna just throw that up on the screen real quick. Um, requesting the full amount. Does anybody have any questions? Do members of the commission have questions for Ms. Facilius? This item does not uh, require full discussion. Uh, it's more of an internal matter, but uh, do you have questions for staff? If not, is there a motion on the staff's recommendation or the request? I move in case uh, VAR 20-23-40, um, a refund of $100 uh, be issued on 511 South Village Drive. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded to provide a refund of $100 for case VAR-23-40, which is the herd refund request for variance from Chapter 833. A vote yes is a vote to refund the petitioner $100. Edward Ullman? Yes. Jerry Pittsburgh? Yes. Julie Thomas? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Tron Enright Randolph? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Jeff Morris? Yes. Cheryl Munson? Yes. And I'll just make sure D. Owens is not. No, okay. she won't be. She here. won't be here. Okay, no. great. So motion carries eight to zero. Okay, great. Well, we're moving right along uh, to fi page 55 in our packet, and we're now at new business with the first item being SAD 23 20, Branson Properties Type E Administrative Subdivision Right of Way with waiver request. This is the preliminary hearing and a waiver of final hearing has been requested concerning two parcels totaling 6.22 plus or minus acres in Clear Creek Township, section one at 4099 East Ramp Creek Road and 4192 East Ramp Creek Road. And Mr. Myers, if you'd please review this with us. Thank you, one moment, let me pull up the slides here. So this is SAD 23-20, Branson Properties Type E Administrative Subdivision. It is a Type E Administrative Subdivision. Typically we don't see these at the Planning Commission level as they're performed uh, administratively and reviewed by staff. However, there is a need for a right-of-way with waiver with this petition, so it is before you this evening. The site contains two parcels totaling 6.86 acres, each driving access from East Ramp Creek Road. The purpose of the petition is to transfer 0 0.08 acres from 4192 East Ramp Creek Road, also known as Tract 2 of the proposed uh, Type E Administrative Subdivision, to 4099 East Ramp Creek Road, also known as Tract 1. The transfer area is already on the north side of East Ramp Creek Road, the same as the proposed Tract 1. And the proposed uh, Type E subdivision requires a right-of-way dedication of 90 feet along East Ramp Creek Road, according to the Monroe County Thoroughfare Plan for a minor collector roadway. Um, that equates to 45 feet from center line for both Tract 1 and Tract 2, given that they are on uh, opposite sides of East Ramp Creek Road. The existing residential structures will become pre-existing non-conforming structures as a result of this subdivision due to the fact that they will no longer meet front setback requirements after right-of-way dedication. The requirements for right-of-way dedication come from Chapter 854-14D, of the Subdivision Control Ordinance, as well as Chapter 856-1A3, and those are on the screen here, also in your packet, uh, that gives the uh, Plan Commission, um, excuse me, the plan, uh, Planning Department the authority to request right-of-way dedication for Type E subdivisions. 
So here is a snippet of the existing uh, plat document. You'll see that the hatched area uh, is the transfer area of 0 0.08 acres. There are two existing structures located in this area. Um, you'll also note that there is a note on the plat that says wood buildings to be removed. Um, so that was the original intent when the subdivision application was submitted. However, uh, through a conversation with the petitioner, uh, planning staff came to understand that the petitioner would like to keep the structures. Um, so to keep them, um, they would have to apply for this right-of-way with waiver. Otherwise, those structures would be inside dedicated right-of-way. Mm -hmm. The highway department uh, pr provided some comments as well for this petition. Um, you'll see that the pink line was the original proposed right-of-way by the surveyor and petitioner. However, through conversations with the highway department, the yellow line is the recommended or requested new right-of-way dedication line uh, to accommodate those structures. So everywhere outside of the yellow lines, the standard 45-foot right-of-way dedication will apply. And anywhere in the yellow, it will be actually about 15 feet worth of dedication from the center line of East Ramp Creek Road. Here we have the location maps in okay. Clear Creek Township. Here is the site conditions map. Um, you'll note that there's a limited buildable area given the slopes <laughs> on the properties. Um, this small um, rectangle uh, parallelogram you see up here on the north side of the road that is the transfer area. Uh, currently, it belongs to the southern parcel, so they're just kind of cleaning it up and transferring that little area to the northern parcel. Here we have some site photos uh, for the uh, petition sites off of East Ramp Creek Road. Uh, the picture in front of you is looking north uh, onto Tract 1, where the structures reside. So you can see them in the distance there as we get closer, and those are the two wood structures here. Um, off to the right side of the screen, those are the two that would uh, be located in right-of-way um, and hence the uh, waiver request this evening. Just some more photographs of the site. Um, here you can, see, you can see how close they are to the existing uh, pavement. And then this is looking south onto the other property uh, that is transferring the, the land where those structures reside. And just some more pictures of that site. Okay, so here is the preliminary plat uh, for the Type E subdivision for um, this petition. This is also included in the packet. And that brings me to the staff's recommendation. Uh, staff recommends approval of the partial right-of-way with waiver request based on the findings of fact and the reports from the highway department and subject to the following conditions. One, the petitioner provides findings of fact. That is one requirement um, that is typical for all waiver requests that the petitioner provides uh, their own findings. Um, two, the petitioner removes the call out on the plat that states the structures are to be removed. And three, the petitioner satisfies all remaining comments from the highway engineer. I will not take any questions. Okay, do members of the plan commission have questions for staff? I'll look to my right here and see if there are any questions for staff. I'll look to my left. Okay, we'll have another opportunity after we hear from the petitioner, the petitioner's representative. Mr. Deckard, will you be speaking on this? Uh, please come forward. You'll, you and the petitioner total have 15 minutes to review this, your request with us. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so the, the main purpose of this was to be able to salvage the, the two storage building next to Ramp Creek Road here. Um, so Drew's spot on with his report. Thank you for your report, Drew and uh, we're agreeable to the terms of reducing the amount of proposed right away here just so that we can encompass the buildable area. As you can see in this picture here before you, there's not a whole lot of buildable area here <laughs> on this lot, so being able to salvage some of this uh, buildable area with less than 15% slope would be appreciated. But if there's any questions that the panel may have, be glad to answer any questions. Does any w member of the plan commission have a question for Mr. Deckard? Mr. Garitas? No, I have not. Okay, Th thank you. Um, we will now turn to members of the public to see if there are any um, testimonies in favor of or in opposition to the petition. And have you already signed in, sir? Yes. 
Yes, please come to the podium and state your name, and you'll have three minutes, unless you are the petitioner. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for your time. I'm Kurt Branson, the property owner. Oh, yes. Well, you have the remaining oh, time so up to the public? 15 minutes oh, okay. that Mr. Decker did not <laughs> okay. use. Thank you. Yeah, so this is my first time here. I had no idea that the, uh, there was a 90-foot uh, for, for the highway or 45 feet on one side, so this is uh, all kind of new to me. But uh, So I've owned the property at 4099 for nine years. Um, it's kind of a neighborhood that's fallen on hard times, and it was ripped uh, out, all the copper was ripped out and vandalized, so I've since fixed that up, and uh, it's a rental property now, but it does have these sheds are closest to the deck. It's 13 feet, and from the house, it's 18 feet, so they're really close, they're an eyesore. Um, so when the property across the street came available a year and a half ago, uh, we decided to, to purchase that, uh, hoping that we could transfer this little square, and oops, excuse me, and these sheds uh, onto this lot, and then the shed garages could be uh, repaired and used by, um, you know, on that lot for the renters and tear down the uh, eyesore across the street as well. It's <laughs> part of the intention. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, yeah, I don't know how, I, yeah, we just wasn't sure if we could keep them or tear them down, but it, it would be more ad advantageous for us to uh, just repair them. It would probably cost more to actually to tear them down to deal with them. There's a cellar underneath uh, the one to the left there. Um, hmm. So yeah, that's that's the main intention, and I mean, I, that's really all I have to say, I guess. Thank you, Mr. Branson. <laughs> Thank and you. I'll turn now to the remaining members of the public. If there is any testimony in favor or in opposition to this petition, please come to the podium in the room, or press um, star nine on your telephone to be recognized, or raise your virtual hand on Zoom to be recognized. You see anyone, Miss Nestor Jellen? No? Okay. So there is no testimony in favor or in opposition to this petition. So we turn now to members of the Plan Commission to see if there's any further discussion or a motion. Mr. Pittsford. Mr. Branson, could you come back to the microphone? Thank you. Yeah, it's a gravel floor, but it, you know these were structures that were built back in the days when they used actual two by fours of white oak. Uh, so you know it needs some minor structural repairs, and just I really just need a new roof and just and decide it. There's some little kind of like sheds attached, lean to or you know onto the sides that would need new posts. Um, but the main, the two main structures are fairly structurally sound. Okay. Well, it looked like it's leaning, and mm -hmm. my concern was it was going to fall into the road. But yeah. it does need put back in structural repair so that that's not an eventuality because uh, as it looks to me in the photograph, that looks like a common event. So yeah, it's just on, one, on the one close to the road, there, the shed on this side has kind of fallen in, and just the front, maybe two or three feet, has leaned out, but the rest of the of the um, of the two by fours are, are straight all the way back. So yeah, it just it needs a, a new face basically, and it's, it's going to be put in good repair. Yeah, absolutely. I, br I did bring a picture of my intention, just like a bat board and batten. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I'm, I'm not worried about particulars. Right, but yeah, this is sure that you this is the idea. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so they'll match the house a little yeah, bit. Would be nice. Nice to include that. Yeah. <laughs> a, a wedding chapel. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that the only question? Yes. Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you, Mr. Yeah. Branson. Any further questions or discussion or a motion? I can make one. Thank you, Mr. Garantaz. Drew, would you put your there? Thank you. Okay, I move in the matter of uh, SAD 23 20 Branson Properties Type E Administrative Subdivision. This is a right of way with waiver uh, and a waiver for second hearing on this. I move that we uh, approve this waiver request and with the waiver of second hearing under the conditions that the petitioner provide findings of fact relative to this petition, that the petitioner, the petitioner removes all call out on the plat that states the structures are to 
quote, to be removed, and three, the petitioner satisfies all remaining comments from the highway department. Second. Does this include a waiver of final hearing? Yes, yes, you did say that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve SAD-23-20, mm -hmm. which for clarification is a partial right of way with waiver just for the north side, the south side is still being dedicated, um, including a waiver of final hearing and the uh, conditions as stated in the staff report and repeated by um, commission member Bernie Garitas. A vote in favor is a vote to approve. Jerry Pittsford. Yes. Julie Thomas. Yes. Margaret Clemens. Yes. Sean Enright Randolph. Yes. Bertie Garitas. Yes. Jeff Morris. Yes. Cheryl Munson. Yes. Edward Ullman. Yes. Okay. Motion is carried eight to zero. Okay. Well, we're moving right along, and we're now at item number two under new business, and this is another rezone request for Worms Way. And so it's REZ-23-3, Worms Way Rezone from Ag RR to PB. This is a preliminary hearing and the waiver of final hearing has been requested concerning two parcels totaling 12.86 plus or minus acres in Washington Township, Section 28 at 7850 North Wayport Road. And um, we'll just continue forward, we'll uh, ask the staff to review this with us. I don't, you know, if anyone wanted to make a motion to try to uh, say that there should be a limit of the testimony from three minutes down to one minute, we could do that. Otherwise, we could just beg of the public that uh, since we've heard this probably four times <laughs> since we've been on the, um, the plan commission that you uh, try to be as, uh, as um, succinct as you could be and maybe just remind us quickly why you may be in favor or opposed to uh, the petition, but it's up to you. I don't think I'm inclined to request that the minutes of the allowable testimony be reduced from three minutes down to one. We'll just ask your consideration that we've heard this before and we remember. So with that in mind, uh, Mr. Myers, would you please review this case with us? Thank you. <clears throat> so this is REZ 23-3, Wormsway Rezone from Agricultural Reserve to pre-existing business. The petitioner is seeking to rezone the property at 7850 North Wayport Road from Ag RR to PB. Subject property includes 6.65 acre lot A and 6.21 acre lot B of the Wormsway Type A plat that was originally developed pursuant to 1995 special exception for agribusiness and commercial greenhouse that allowed for the establishment of Worms Way. The 1995 special exception uh, was requ request was made by Worms Way to both the Board of Zoning Appeals and the Planning Commission. Um, in 1997, the Planning Commission approved the request with several conditions of approval and the Board of Zoning Appeals approved that request as well in February of 1995, citing the same conditions of approval. Um, so those conditions of approval are listed here on the screen as well as in your packet. Those conditions uh, included uh, site plan shall include the following, an existing cemetery, existing proposed buffering and sign placement, in-dot approval, all and three all statements in this report are considered to be binding and shall be acknowledged as commitments by the petitioner. So we have heard this one before. Um, we do have some recent cases as well. Um, I'm going to click to those real quick. <coughs> So we had a use variance that, to add metal fabrication that was approved by the BZA. Um, then we had a rezone request from Ag RR to Light Industrial that was denied by the county commissioners in October of 2021. We had a pair of use variance requests to add general contractors of use to the Ag RR district. Both of those were denied by the Board of Zoning Appeals in August of 2022 and March of 2023. And then most recently, if you remember, we had a request to rezone this property to a planned unit development through the outline plan process. Um, staff had originally recommended denial um, and it was heard once by the planning commission in September of this year. Uh, however, after that meeting, the petitioner withdrew the petition and decided to uh, resubmit a application to request a rezone to pre-existing business instead. 
Okay, so here on the screen is the definition of the pre-existing business district. This is also included in the packet. Uh, it's rather wordy, so I won't read it uh, verbatim off the, off the slide. However, um, the main thing to know is that the pre-existing business zone um, is a unique zoning district. Um, it is applied to uh, properties that had pre-existing businesses on them during the last 1997 um, um, ab uh, adoption of the zoning ordinance. Um, <coughs> and it has a rather unique application with respect to, to uses. If the use that was active on the site when it received the pre-existing business district designation um, had a certain intensity value, then any use afterward must match that intensity or be less within the limited business or the general business district. So in other words, um, any use, so say a use was medium intensity at the time when it was a pre-existing business designation, um, any use further on that site must be at least medium intensity that is available in the limited business or the general business district. So agribusiness slash commercial greenhouse, that does not appear in the current zoning ordinance. So staff did their best to determine what that use would be classified in today's terms. And, that, and staff came to the conclusion that the use existing in Chapter 802 of commercial facilities for the sale, repair, and service of agricultural equipment, vehicles, feed, or supplies fits best. Um, and that definition is below here on the screen. It states establishments selling, renting, or repairing agricultural machinery, equipment, and supplies for use in soil preparation and maintenance, for planting and harvesting of crops, and other operations and processes pertaining to farming and ranching. Now that use, the commercial facilities use, is classified as a high intensity use. So rezoning the property to the pre-existing business zoning district would permit any available use that is listed as either high, medium, or low intensity in the general business or the limited business zoning district. So here we have some uh, old maps of the zoning districts. This one is from uh, 1996, so this was before the most recent adoption of the zoning ordinance, that was in 1997. Um, so the colors are kind of faded here on this map. Uh, I denoted the property with this yellow star here, and you'll note that um, this area, you can kind of tell with the colors, this area was designated as agricultural rural reserve. Um, there were some limited business uh, areas and industrial areas to the north. And this is the map that we had from 1997. Again, uh, you can see the colors here with the legend. This area was designated as agricultural rural reserve. You can see that there is some pre-existing business parcels to the north. As for the fact that this particular parcel was not zoned pre-existing business, um, staff cannot say. Um, we looked through meeting minutes um, and we could not find anything specifically relevant to um, this property itself from the um, meetings that discussed the adoption of the 1997 ordinance. Um, it is staff's uh, assumption that um, due to the special exception that was awarded in 1995 um, that the plan commission at the time or county commissioners at the time just um, kept that moving forward, that special exception for the Wormsway property. Here I have the letter from the county assessor's office. Um, we've looked at this before in the previous petitions. Um, this is an assessment from the uh, county assessor that revalued the land after multiple attempts to rezone and uh, apply use variances to the property. Um, and therefore they, um, after reviewing all the materials, the county assessor revalued uh, the property and it um, lost some value essentially. Here we have the current zoning map. Comprehensive plan is designated rural residential. And then we have here on the screen a uh, aerial image of the petition site as well as some locations of nearby businesses. Uh, we have Oliver Winery to the north, uh, Cook Regen, Regen Tech to the northwest, and to the south we have Bloomington Auto Parts. And then here we have some site photographs. Uh, you are all very familiar with this site given the amount of times it's been presented. So I will uh, quickly um, scroll through these. And if we have any questions about any of these pictures, we can come back to them. 
These are all also included in the packet. Um, staff included this exhibit in the last report with the plan unit outline plan. Um, this talks about um, the corridor plan for State Road 37 and I-69. Um, and in it, it had some interesting information about um, existing business uses um, in or around, or along or around Sample Road. Um, so that does specifically call out to these uses in the area, um, suggesting that, um, let's see here, the intensity of the uses shall not be allowed to increase beyond current conditions, and such businesses shall not be permitted to expand onto adjacent properties. Um, and there's more language here about um, just the discussion of existing businesses along State Road um, 37 and near Sample Road that is for your consideration. Here we have the petitioner's letter to the Plan Commission stating their request to rezone the property from Ag RR to pre-existing business. This is included in the packet. Um, here I have the use table for the Ag RR uh, district and the use table for the general business and limited business districts. So um, all of these uses would technically be permitted uh, within the pre-existing business district given that the use of the existing or prior use of uh, Worms Way would have been considered a high intensity use. Here I have the Worms Way type A subdivision plat that has lot A and lot B delineated. And here I have the letter of support. This was provided for the uh, planned unit outline plan, um, but was also included as part of the submittals from the petitioner. And then I have a letter of opposition um, from um, nearby neighbors of the property, uh, as well as this one, and these are all um, included in the packet. And this is the current petition timeline that we have before us. This is the preliminary hearing, um, and it will go to the Plan Commission um, uh, regular session on January 16th, if it is uh, not, if the waiver final hearing is not waived. Um, I included the Plan Commission admin meeting here on the screen as well. Um, that actually, this petition will not be heard at that meeting. Um, given that planning staff and the planning commission will be only listening to um, CDO related items during that admin meeting. Um, and then of course the board of commissioners uh, meeting, which is the ultimate um, um, deciding factor um, that will be determined after the planning commission's recommendation is made. Okay, so staff recommends a forwarding this petition to the county commissioners with a negative recommendation uh, based on the findings of fact, specifically due to its incompatibility with the Monero County comprehensive plan um, consideration of this petition site under the CDO draft zoning should be considered by the Planning Commission and ultimately by the County Commissioners to identify a more suitable zoning district and whether an amendment to the comprehensive plan is warranted in this area. Um, planning staff has communicated to the petitioner that the property could be requested to be rezoned to general business or limited business and the County Development Ordinance map and text is currently drafted to phase out all properties zoned pre-existing business and rezone those sites to either general business or limited business, depending on their current use intensity. So therefore, a rezone to pre-existing business would ultimately contrast with the goals of the CDO uh, to eliminate the pre-existing business zoning district. Um, and the reason for eliminating the pre-existing business zoning district is to avoid any confusion for future permitted uses based on their prior intensity. I will now take any questions. Do members of the plan commission have questions for staff? Mr. Enright Randall. Uh, first, thanks for the presentation. Um, thank you for the timeline. I think that's very healthy, helpful because we've heard this a number of different times. Um, I'm kind of scratching my head when I see that the BZA approved it for the metal fabrication uh, additional use, but they never submitted a, a commercial site plan, which is interesting. So um, I guess my question um, is, one, I, I don't like the pre-existing business zone. That's just my take on this topic in, in general. Um, how many more uses are in the light business, general business 
um, or how many less uses are in that? I, I would assume that um, if they went to pre-existing business, they would have a slew of uses and um, the general business, light business, probably reduces the number of those uses. And I'm not asking you to count them, but like, I guess there's probably some pretty significant uses that would it, not be permitted. On the screen. Right, but I'm curious of what planning would really not want to see go there um, based off of their um, negative recommendation and um, talking about them pursuing a rezone to general and limited business. And I, I wonder what kind of uses are in that pre-existing business that we're really trying not to allow, if, if that question is straightforward enough, I guess. Sure. Um, so I can say that the... Um, during the planned unit development outline plan petition that was here in September, they were requesting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different uses, um, that being religious facility, pet services, furniture sales, transfer or storage terminal, general contractor, metal fabrication, which is currently permitted under that use variance you mentioned, and warehousing and distribution. Um, so seven uses were requested from that outline plan amendment. Um, and then now on the screen, um, all of those uses that you see would be permitted. Um, so it's a mix of low intensity, medium intensity, and high intensity uses. Um, so for example, a couple of high intensity uses I can see right off the bat, um, hospital, um, let's see, air cargo and package service, um, building materials, Home Improvement Center, Restaurant Drive-In, that's just a few to name. Um, so there's definitely a, a large amount of uses that would be available compared to the planned unit development. Right, and you're illustrating my point. And my main point is I think going back to the pre-existing business just gives too many uh, viable uses that don't fit this particular area. So personally, I'd be way more inclined to see a, a rezone to general or limited business um, and plus, to your point, that we're trying to get away from these pre-existing business zone overlay in the first place. Thank you, Mr. Enright Randall. Mr. Pittsford? Yes, thank you. Um, I had a question in reading this, and I don't know if I read it. If it was in previous reports, and I didn't notice it or not, but uh, why would an amendment to the comp plan be warranted? And what would the text of such an amendment be? So uh, if we're doing a rezone anywhere in the county, under the county development ordinance, the zoning map that we're looking to put forward has to follow the comprehensive plan. If in any areas it does not follow the comprehensive plan, we note that as an addendum when we go through the process. So right now with what they're recommending, if it's not in line with the comprehensive plan, that's one of the findings that we consider for a rezone. Oh, okay, all right, good, good. So uh, that, that's pretty standard. I just, I, I don't think I've ever seen that called out specifically before. So it's, it's good to know that, I appreciate that. And then my second question is uh, the determination of limited business or general business is gonna be uh, made in light uh, of the current business and there's not currently a business there. So given that, uh, would it be predicated on the last business and operation and determining the intensity that's appropriate? It's actually determined what the business was in 1997. Okay. All so right. that's, I think Drew had a slide up that showed it was the commercial ag. commercial facilities for the sale, repair, and service of agricultural equipment, vehicles, feed, or supplies. So it was a high intensity use at the time, and we would consider it to be eligible if zoned for existing business for all high intensity uses in the GD and LB. Okay, that, that was my understanding, but I wanted to make sure I was clear in, in that. So uh, I, I believe that does answer my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pittsford. Do members of the plan commission to my left have questions for staff? If not, we move to the petitioner or the petitioner's representative for your presentation. 
Mr. Heights on Zoom, if you'd let him go first, please. Sure. Um, tech services, can you please unmute Mr. Height? And together you'll have 15 minutes. Thank you. I believe he is able to unmute, but he will have to unmute on his side. Okay. Um, Mr. Height, if you could unmute yourself. On your side, if you're calling in by telephone, I believe that's star six. Uh, uh, it appears that you're unmuted. So uh, you and uh, Mr. Carmen have together 15 minutes. The microphone is, um, it looks as though the volume is working. However, we hear no sound. Okay, now that is mute. Okay, Mr. Height, if you are on Zoom, unmute yourself. If you are calling in by telephone, press star six on the telephone. And please try to speak so we can try to hear you. Do you see the symbol with the microphone? I do. I don't know if Tech Services has any. Uh, are we able to hear those online? I have a comment um, from um, MS4 coordinator saying that she can hear him, but this room cannot, okay. it appears. Um, so it looks like folks online can hear him speaking, but um, this room is not able to. Okay, at the I moment. think tech services just maybe needs a minute to resolve yes. the issue. Bear with us while we resolve these technical difficulties. Tech services, you heard, didn't you, that we have these technical difficulties, right? Thank you. Can Mr. Um, Hyde be promoted to a panelist? He is currently listed as a panelist. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, a, it's an audio problem with the speakers in this room. I see. TSD, can you give us an update on how long you need to repair this issue? You can send it as a chat, maybe. I can't open chat. Can you open chat, Jackie? So star six on the telephone, it will uh, tend to unmute you. He's, at, he's on a computer. Yeah. You can read a subtitle. Okay. I, I, I think our other option is to get a couple of us on Zoom and crank up the volume on our speakers so we can at least hear it in here because others can hear it and we're getting subtitles. Yes, Mr. Ullman. And would it be possible for the petitioner's representative Let me try unmuting my laptop and seeing if I can, if it's bad feedback, I apologize, okay. but I'll try. Just, just have your microphone on mute, you'll be fine. Okay. 
So for just for the moment, um, uh, Ms. Nestor Jellin is going to try to put the Zoom to the microphone so that Mr. Hyde can be heard. No, nope, they didn't. He's going to restart his Zoom. He just logged off and he will log back in. Oh. Okay, bear with us. We're sorry. I'm curious, um, since there's some indication that it's working and it might just be the petitioner, is there any way we can test from someone else that's online if we can hear them? He has logged off and is re-logging into Zoom to try to uh, correct the situation. and. Then if not, we'll ask Mr. Carmen to telephone him and put the telephone up to, but first things first, he's, one process is underway. We'll proceed to another one after that. Would it be okay if I ask uh, Kelsey Fatoni or Lisa Ridge to test sure. since they're online? Sure. Lisa or Kelsey, could you unmute to see if we so can hear you? Yes, we cannot hear Ms. Ridge either. I see. But they can hear online. So they can hear us, but we can't hear them. Um, Mr. Carmen, has, um, as the representative for the petitioner, how would you like to proceed? Okay. I'm so sorry, Mr. Height. We know that this is uh, anxiety producing enough um, with the request that you're making and for the technology to not go well is frustrating and I apologize for that. So, Mr. Carmen, we'll take your lead. <laughs> he's, he's currently listed as an attendee. He's currently listed as an attendee on the on the Zoom. Rather than panelists. If you list, if you can raise your Zoom hand, Mr. Height. Uh, tech services will no, nothing right there on top of it. promote you over to speak. So. No, Mr. Height, we cannot hear you. We, um, I think you can hear us, but we are not able to hear you. Yeah, well, everyone, the people who are expert are trying. Mr. Height, I posted uh, Mr. Carmen's cell phone number in the chat. If you can call that number, we'll be able to hear you. Mr. Height, we can see Mr. Height now, but I don't know if we can. No, we heard he's on before. Oh, Sorry. we did? Yeah, we did. He was up in the chat. I didn't see him before. Yeah, he did. Okay. Okay, I'm going to put 
microphone up to the, the microphone here and s let's try this, okay? I'm gonna try to bootstrap You have to it. identify yourself, okay? <laughs> try to bootstrap this. Martin, you still there? Okay, all right, try it now. Are you speaking, Martin? volume down on his on his computer right now while he's speaking because it's gonna give feedback. And then the other option Mr. is Mike, if you turn your volume down on your machine that might How about that? To hear each other. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, Martin, they can hear you. here in just a minute but uh what i would like is uh can, can i just start by just asking the commissioners just a simple this is a raise your hand poll uh how many of you think it, it raise your hand if you think the cdo will be activated in 2024 we don't respond to questions from petitioners i'm sorry sir we just are taking your testimony i didn't hear any of that you want me to repeat it? Yeah. Martin, uh, the President of the Commission declined. They don't answer questions for petitioners. Oh, okay. All right, I'll go ahead and comment on my petition. Uh, this is all about unequal treatment. Worms Way was established in 95. In 1997, 14 other properties were named pre-existing business without a petition. At that time, Worms Way should have been named pre-existing business. So for 26 years, those 14 property owners have had property rights that I was denied. In order, to request, in order to correct this, I respectfully request that the commission vote to rezone the property to pre-existing business so that I would have the same property rights as the other 14 property owners. I'll yield the time to Mike. Thank you, Mr. Hyde. My name is Mike Carmen, attorney and representing the petitioner, AH and SH LLC. That's, that's Martin Hyde and, and Strauss. Uh, I want to make a few random comments, kind of in response to observations and comments we made earlier, and then get back to just a few minutes specific on this. Uh, I understand you may not like pre existing business, but it was done, as Martin has, has talked about, on a number of properties. One of some of those still exist. The qu staff made a comment in, in the report, and, it, and Drew mentioned tonight, about suggesting, well, look at the DB zone or LI zone. They did LI zone petition several years ago. You recommended approval at 7-0, and the county commissioners denied at 3-0. So we're supposed to go back and ask for the same thing again. The county commissioners said no already. If you look at this and his complaint about fairness, his property is being treated differently than 14 other properties north and south of him. This isn't just a question of proximity to Bloomington. There are properties to the north of this, properties south of this that are presently either uh, pre-existing business or have been rezoned to LB and under the proposed zoning map that's available online as part of the, the CDO effort, they're all retaining that zoning. The comprehensive plan apparently applies only to this property, because there are 14 other properties, I think it's 11 now, 11 other properties north and south of this that are being retained for LB zoning. And the comp plan didn't force them to go to Ag 2.5, at least the proposed map, the planning, the planning is put together based on feedback. 
So again, he sees he's being treated differently. Well, there's no guarantee when that zone or <laughs> that map is going to be approved. Next year, we had hoped. We've hoped it for four years. You've hoped it for about that long, I'm sure. And, and, and it's been a long and arduous effort. I understand that. But there's really no indication that it's going to happen this coming year either for a number of reasons. But we'll see. Maybe we'll get surprised. But there's no certainty of what I, even when that. What we do know is that the draft map that has been published and has stayed there now for a number of months calls for this to be zoned Ag 2.5. Not LB, not LI, not GB, Ag 2.5 perpetuating the very problem that Mr. Hyde is complaining about. He's not being treated fairly. He's not being treated the same as anybody else. We offered a compromise on this issue a few months ago. That's a comment you made earlier about you've heard this a number of times. That last effort was a PUD. That was a compromise effort as opposed to the full range of everything that, would, that the PV zone would allow, but to narrow it down to some identified specific uses, I think Drew Conlon was six or seven. Again, the opposition from the neighbors was consistent with what they've done every time for every petition for a number of years. There was enough discussion here the, the, when it came up on the, on the first meeting to make it pretty clear that this, as a body, was not going to support that. And so we backed off on that. And, and the petition now is he should have been treated the same as comparably situated properties under the same considerations, the same comp plan, the, uh, the proximity, the uh, residential neighbors surround them, everything, and so it's time to do it. It didn't happen in 97, it's time to do it, and it's time to rezone it to PV. Whether you like PV or not, there still is going to be a further effort to rezone it, even in front of the PV, because you've got a map coming up. And, and so the, if there's gonna be specific discussion about this property and what's the appropriate zone for it at, at that time, then, then I guess we can engage in that. But we don't know when that's going to happen, if it's going to happen, what we do know is that this property should have been zoned pre-PB in 97, and that you've got an opportunity now to correct what we clearly believe to be a mistake. He talks about doesn't have the same property rights. It's, it's, it's much more egregious than that. It's not only property rights. You saw the letter from the assessor. You saw the, the impact of, of that, that decision then has finally come to roost. When the assessor finally took a hard look at this, and, and, and frankly on request, but when she took a hard look at this and sees the uses permitted in the this exception that we had in the, the Ag RR simply are not doable on this property. Those buildings are wasted. The improvements of this property are wasted. And that's the change on the, on the tax assessment value from whatever it was, I want to say, I lose track, 1.6, 2.4, somewhere in there, down to about $650,000. Nobody wants to see their property devalued. These neighbors who the, oppose everything complain they don't want to see their properties devalued. And yet, with these buildings in place for the last 20 plus years, those properties have doubled and tripled in value. Check the, check the list of tax assessment values. In the shadow of this property, fully developed as it is, those, if those property owners have, fortunately, experienced tremendous growth and, and increase in their property values. This property has had no adverse impact on those properties, either use or value, which are always matters you consider on that for other petitions in any event. Rezoning to PB is the right thing to do. It's the only, apparently it's the only cure possible to the, to the prior mistake. It's an opportunity to do that. And again, you're gonna still have a zoning ordinance map to approve at some point next year or whenever. And on that and in that process will be the opportunity to further consider maybe a different zone instead of the PB. But in the meantime, it needs to be corrected and we'd ask you to do that. Thank you, Mr. Carmen. We will now hear from the public and do members of the Plan Commission have questions for Mr. Carmen before he sits down. He has another seven minutes left of his testimony. So I will ask if members of the Plan Commission have questions for Mr. Carmen. No, not at this time, sir. So um, we will turn now to the public. And uh, if the public would come to the microphone, introduce yourself, and it's good to see you here, Senator Cook. And um, if you have three minutes to speak in favor and opposition to this petition. Well, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the commission. My name is Eric Cook, and I'm here tonight representing the Windsor Private Homeowners Association. And we rise in opposition to the petition, and we will certainly do our best to respect the request of the chair to keep our testimony truncated due to the history of, of this matter. Following me, individual homeowners will be speaking uh, as uh, individuals. 
and their concerns align with the negative staff recommendation and include its incompatibility with the Monroe County Comprehensive Plan, that it's out of sequence given the more comprehensive I-69 corridor plan. The negative impact on the neighborhood and a, somewhat of a lack of transparency with respect. Um, who is the potential purchaser and what will the activities be? That's a natural concern. To the extent the concern is diminution of value, and we don't agree that it should be, but to the extent that it is, there's a potential for a double dip. What, if any, compensation was received as a result of the I-69 condemnation proceedings? What was the value of the lease if it was monetized in the sale of Worms Way to the hedge fund that it was sold to? Was there a termination payment that was monetized? In other words, was the alleged diminution of value already monetized through other means? The county is not at fault, not to blame for the current zoning. We respectfully request and register opposition uh, to the petition. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Okay, are there are other members of the public who would like to speak in favor or opposition to the petition? Please come up, make sure you're signed in, and uh, give us your name, and you'll have up to three minutes, but we beg of you to consider this is the month of December. <laughs> it's Absolutely. the darkest month of the year. <laughs> All righty. Testing, testing. Uh, my name is Brian Booz. I'm a resident of Windsor Private, the neighborhood that we're uh, next door to this facility. Um, and uh, I wanted to say, I'm, again, as the previous iterations, I'm in opposition uh, to this particular proposal as well as the others. Um, a lot of the various reasons, it's all the same group, we're all here. You know, we've heard all the environmental noise and that. We've heard that, I don't want to rehash all that. What I want to say about this particular proposal is one, um, I do agree it is against, uh, it is in conflict with the existing comprehensive plan and the ongoing CDO effort uh, to revise everything. I was actually in the room with you all last Monday, or Tuesday, last week, and to, to observe, not to do with this particular issue, but the CDO process, what's really going on. I have sympathy for all of you that have to go through all that. It's a detail uh, conscious process and probably, you know, it's a task I don't want, but I got to see how it works. And part of that though, and going through all that, uh, my observation was it's to get rid of you know, exceptions. Uh, this business of pre-existing business being one of them. You know, ideally we get rid of that as we go through the CDO. So introducing a brand new one now, prior to finishing that seems to me to have the sequence backwards that we're gonna introduce yet another exception of exactly the type we said this process is not to allow anymore and make things more consistent, but we're throwing just another one on right midstream in the midst of all that CDO effort, which to my mind degrades the value of the CDO effort uh, in, in general, if we're just gonna keep plowing ahead with exceptions like this right in the middle of it. Um, and so I think that uh, to me just seems like a, a sequence issue that doesn't make any sense to me given the amount of time that everybody's putting into the CDO effort. The last thing I wanted to say was, and I just heard that all the, the property itself, the improvements, everything that have been put on there over the years, um, and that they're being wasted. Um, Mr. Height knew exactly what the zoning was, what was allowed, what wasn't, what someday, if he had to sell it the way it was zoned currently, all that. He knew all that when he sunk the money in to make those improvements. That didn't just happen. That was a conscious effort by a businessman who made some decisions. He's gonna use those improvements for a while, maybe later on. He won't want them anymore, whatever. But those were a conscious decision on his part, knowing exactly how the property was zoned and what those improvements might or might not be worth to future owners of that property the way it was zoned. He put the money in there anyway. I don't consider that, hey, they're being wasted. I think somebody took a gamble, and now this is part of the decision that he previously made. So I don't consider that something that we have to resolve for him, that that's now or the for the county. Hey, it's being wasted. That was a businessman's direct decision on his own affairs, and this is, it is what it is now. It's not the county or the neighborhoods or anybody else's problem to resolve that for him. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Booz. And uh, we will go with the people who are in the room first and then turn to online. And please come forward to the podium and make sure you're signed I'm in. Signed in. My name is Dave Gent. I live in the neighborhood. Um, 
you know, first I want to thank the staff for looking at this yet again, um, and I agree with their recommendation to deny this. I think, you know, if you've been here for a while, we've been here for the last four years um, talking about the same thing, and the owner has tried to figure out a way to get around what he created and put something on the property that really doesn't fit. Um, we heard about, about property values, and I can probably guarantee you that if any of the proposed uses that had been denied were approved, my property value wouldn't be what it is today. It would be less. Um, an asphalt plant next to it, I don't think so. Major roofing construction, all that, I don't think so. So I, you know, I think our neighborhood is concerned about our neighborhood, that it remains um, a nice place for us to live. And while we hope the property can be used for something, it needs to be used for something that doesn't hurt our property values, the 38 people who live in our neighborhood, um, because of decisions that this person made decades ago. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So if there's someone else here in the room who would like to speak, and please be sure you're signed in and then remind us of your name and uh, you'll have three minutes. Uh, yes, you can do that. I, yeah, because the, uh, when you hand those out, then return to the microphone so your comments can be recorded. Thank you. And thank you. I've handed those out before, and I'm um, a local realtor. My name is Julie Booz. I live in Windsor Private, and I also oppose the... Um, change of the zoning on Wormsway property. Um, as you can see on those um, handouts, um, Martin Hyatt is the, uh, is the broker on this um, at the top. If you flip through the pages, you can see that in the past, the way that he has marketed this was industrial. And I've circled it, and you can see the different dates at different times, and it goes all the way back to 2020. Um, Martin has said that the property is not worth it, that nobody's going to buy it. I personally showed this property two different times, both of them to uh, prospective buyers that would have fit the current zoning, but the price was prohibited. They, it was just so far out of their reach of what he was uh, asking for it, and he continued to list it both price and listing as industrial for years. Well, that just brings in people who is looking for industrial properties. So to say, gee, I never got a, a buyer, well, there's a good reason why he didn't get a buyer. Um, if he would have advertised it and marketed it for what it is, I think he would have sold it a long time ago. Um, so as a neighbor, we loved Worms Way. They were a great neighbor to us. I mean, really, they were. We all bought everything, mulch, everything, plants from them. Um, and we would like to see someone in there similar to what we had. And that's really what we're fighting for. Uh, we know that something needs to go in that property. We are not against that. We've heard that, that we're totally against something being there. That's not true. We would like to see something go in Worms Way property. But we are concerned because our property lines come right up to their lines. We may be a little further away the house, but our property lines come up to the Worms Way property. So they adjoin. And so we are concerned. Uh, we also have a retention pond that we all enjoy we set lower than what Worms Way is, so if something's going to run off, it's going to come our way. So yeah, we have concerns about that. So that's what we want to know is there is something that can go in there. I know it because I showed two prospective buyers, another agent that lives in our neighborhood, Tammy Drexmiller. She also sent, 
showed it to someone who uh, wanted to rent it, and Martin wasn't, he did not want to rent it. So it's not that he has not had a chance to make money on that property after Wormsway moved out. He could have sold it, he could have rented it. He hasn't even put a for sale sign in the yard mm -hmm. with all the traffic that goes up and down that street going to uh, Oliver Winery. Somebody would see it. Thank you for Thank your time. Thank you so much, Ms. Booz, for coming out again tonight. If there's another member of the in the room of, uh, who would like to speak in either favor or opposition to the petition, please come and make sure you're signed in and then give us your name and you'll, then you'll have three minutes. Hi, my name is Tammy Drickmuller. I live in Windsor Private, of course. Um, I've said this before to you all, I'll keep it very brief. I'm just saying that my property actually does butt up to Worms Way. Um, it's been said that my home is 500 feet away from the buildings. My home may be further away, but my property is not. So it does affect us all differently. Um, and I would just like to say to please consider that because I know if the situation were reversed, you know, you might be fighting for your property as well. And um, I agree, it does not, the rezoning does, con does have a conflict with your current comprehensive plan. So I'll keep it brief, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much, Ms. Druckmuller. Thank, Thank you. And the next person, please. I believe you're already signed in, so. I have signed in. Okay. Uh, my name's Robert Barnes. I also live on a property that abuts the Worms Way property. Um, none of us are really anti-business. We all would like to see something viable in that location. We don't want to see an asphalt pit. We don't want to see, you know, 24-hour truck traffic. Um, I think there's got to be, there are acceptable things. We have approved other plans. We're just, I'm tired of saying it. I don't like coming in here every month to do this, but we're not anti-business. We want something in our backyards that anybody else would want to see in their backyard. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Is there anyone else here who is here to speak about this petition? If not, I'm going to turn to the Zoom attendees. If there is a person on Zoom, please raise your virtual hand. I see a hand raised. Um, Mr. Hostetler, they're going to try to unmute you. Let's hope it works. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Mike Hostetler. I'm a resident of Windsor Private, like my other neighbors, and I also rise in opposition to the petition here. Uh, I won't reiterate some of the statements they've already made because I agree totally with what they've said. I would just say that I, it, I believe we need to keep the Agricultural Rural Reserve nomenclature. I need, think we need to keep the zoning like that. It, there is, there's not enough of that in the county, uh, in my opinion. It's a beautiful area. It, it's, and we moved here because of the way it was zoned, frankly. Uh, I mean, there's no reason to change it. Uh, it's not, you know, it's not our fault that the owner made a bad business decision there. He sold Worms Way, but he kept the buildings. That's not my fault. That's not my fault at all. And the fact that he's pricing it, the buildings at two and a half million dollars, okay, well, you're gonna limit your buyers for an empty building. I, I, you know, I, it, it doesn't take a genius to figure this out, but he, he's not willing to do that. He wants top dollar. You know, he wants Cadillac prices for a Chevette. And yeah, you're, you're not, you're not going to sell the Chevette for a Cadillac price. It's just the way it's going to be. And, you know, it's beyond the houses, though. It's also like the rural environment, the, the, the wildlife, the, the area in general will be, will be permanently harmed. I mean, we have so few spaces that are left in the county that are, you know, inhabited by animals and, and wildlife and everything else. If you start putting just anything you want, and that's what the petitioner wants. He wants the right to put anything he wants in that facility, anything. And that's just not going to fly. That, that, that makes no sense. 
If you want to, if he wants to bring in a, somebody to put a, a, you know, an asphalt plant in there, that's not going to work. It's just going to be an environmental hazard. And even just the mere fact of increased traffic, there's going to be danger. There's kids in the neighborhood. There's people on that road. Sample Road is already well traveled, more so than it needs to be now. And you're just going to add congestion and more congestion, and you're going to strip away everything that makes our community special. And you know, our houses together collectively, there's a lot of money involved. There, there's a lot of money based on the taxes we pay now. And I am going to say that the, our taxes, our appraised values went up, not because of anything we did to our homes, but because of the residential prices in general in the county. So this nonsense about he, you know, he's being untreated unfairly. If anyone's being untreated fairly, it's us, the residents. We're the ones that are being bullied here because of money trumping everything else. And yes, I said Trump, because that's what I feel like you know, the, the, the petitioner is. He's trying to pay taxes on one value and sell it another. And I think that sounds awfully familiar to us these days. So that, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Hostetler. And I see that Julie Aubin has her hand raised too. If uh, she can be unmuted, Ms. Aubin, you'll have three minutes. Okay, this is her husband, Lauren, Lauren Aubin. I'm using, we're using her uh, computer. Thank you, uh, Mr. I wanna, Aubin. I wanna thank the commission uh, for its efforts. In a, one of the previous meetings, one of the commissioners, I wanna thank them. They actually walked through the neighborhood to assess the potential impact that rezoning would have. That, that meant a lot and I really appreciate that, so thank you. Uh, he, he talked about being treated unfairly. I don't know this, but something leads me to believe that if it was redistrict under the old rules, does that have a different tax assessment than rural reserve? And if so, then I think he's, uh, his 26 years of not being properly assessed may be the reason why he didn't uh, request that until now. That's just a comment. So I, I'll, I've echoed, I'll echo what everybody else has said and what's been previously said in other meetings. Uh, born and raised in Bloomington, I think it's the commission's responsibility and hopefully uh, you will do this to protect Bloomington and the corridor, I-69 corridor coming into Bloomington and what is uh, what folks see when they come into the community. Yeah, we all want our property values to be uh, maintained and we don't want some, uh, you know, we Julie and I would not have moved here in this uh, neighborhood if there was heavy industrial there. So just I uh, appreciate what you do. Uh, would ask that you, again, not be swayed by uh, comments that treating unfairly over this period of time. And, and uh, I support the staff's recommendation to deny it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aubin. Um, I'm going to ask if there are other members of the public who are online on Zoom who would like to speak. If so, please raise your virtual hand. If you're calling in by phone and you would like to speak on this issue, please press star nine on your telephone to be recognized. And if there's none, we come back to the petitioner, the petitioner's representative for another five minute rebuttal. Thank you, Mr. Carmen. Uh, this really isn't about the neighborhood. This is about the zoning and the big picture, but I, I, I have to comment on a couple of things that you were told. I don't know that any of any of the neighbors are anti-business. I just know they're anti-business on this property. That's the issue. The complaints about asphalt pits are unfounded. The PUD that was posed that everyone in that neighborhood opposed, but the PUD that was proposed, no new structures, footprint existing, no new paving, 60% open space, on-site detention, no access to any place except front way, off Wayport Road, so no traffic into the neighborhood, and all operations conducted inside the buildings. And yet you get repeatedly, repeatedly, oh, we don't wanna see an asphalt pit, we don't wanna see this. They don't listen. And they all opposed it, every one of them opposed it, the neighborhood meeting included, and those who bothered to, to come that night, and yet it would have been an invisible change to them. Not a thing on the ground would have changed. Besides, so, you're, Mr. Cook, I don't understand his reference to being out of sequence. 
read the I-69 plan. It was brought up at the last meeting. I-69 plan says this should have been rezoned. I-69 plan says maintain all the existing businesses. I-69 plan says don't let the business expand onto other properties. That's not involved here. Allow the businesses to, to be limited to uh, the, uh, no higher intensity than what was in place at the time. Well, you've already been told that's H. It doesn't say businesses should be limited or uses should be limited to medium or low intensity. It says whatever intensity was allowed up to this point, that, that's, your, that's your mark. It could have, if it was part of the plan that you want to downgrade and lower the intensity use, it could have said that, but it didn't. It allowed maintaining the I-69 plan. It's in the, the there, and it, there's uh, the staff kindly put it in there. But if you read the plan, the I the I-69 quarter plan, it says this should have been rezoned then, and would support doing so now, consistent with everything it says in the 69 quarter plan out there. You know, if the issue were, and I, I don't think it is, but by the way, before I forget, we are looking for a waiver second meeting and, and decision tonight. There's no no reason. We need to come back to another meeting. I think you feel the same way, I would hope. But uh, we're looking for a, a decision tonight and wouldn't waste second meeting, please. But the uh, last comment is, you know, this whole issue of values and value of this property neighbors, we're, we're getting astray. You know, if the issue is marketability and that, I'm not a broker, but I would guess I could sell every house in, in that neighborhood if, because I believe that the, the, the average house in there is three bedroom, two or two and a half baths. That's not going to fit everyone, but that's pretty much the mean in there. And so if I'm allowed to listen to this one bedroom, one bath, and sell it for that price, sell it for the price of one bedroom, one bath, I'll fill every one of those in a week. And that's what they're saying Mr. Martin, Mr. Height should do. Price his property as one bed, one, one bath, and take the loss. That's not right. What is right is zone it appropriately. And the appropriate zoning in 97 was pre-existing business. That's the only option you have available to you right now for appropriate zoning. The county commission already told you no LI. They did that about a year and a half ago whenever that last petition went through and the recommendation for approval. So they don't give you a whole lot of options. And again, we'll see what further discussion about appropriate zoning will come as part of the, the CDO as that moves forward. But for now, on the facts before you, PB zoning is the right thing to do. And it's really the only proper option and would ask to do that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Carmen. Now we come back to the members of the plan commission for further discussion and or a motion. I'm going to start with m the members of the plan commission to my left. Um, yes, Mr. I'm a non-voting member, but I do have a couple of comments. Um, well, first off, Mr. Height, he keeps his property in great condition. I mean, for a vacant property, and I thank him for that because there's many people that have vacant properties that don't keep it in the condition that he does. Um, the other thing too, it, 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 it hurts me in the fact that this product type is really missing in our community and these buildings aren't put to use. And it, I know it needs to be the proper use, it needs to be zoned right, and, and, and but then I also think about the other two properties up there. So Oliver Winery, a you know, very busy place, love what they've done for our community. Uh, and then also we've got across the street, which I managed this building for 10 years, which was the, the Brown School. Both are pre-existing. There's going to be a day when those buildings are going to be available. So I just asked the Planning Commission, I, I don't know the answer, but those, those properties are going to be in front of us someday mm -hmm. with the same type of decision. So whatever we decide on this, you know, it, it most likely will carry over into whatever decisions are made on those properties when they eventually may become vacant. I mean, it, uh, someone bought Oliver Winery, they may decide to move that location someday. So that's all I have. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Cockerham. Um, Mr. Ullman, do you have a question or a statement? I just kind of wanted to draw attention to a few things that I've been racking on my head um, and kind of that things that are helping um, sway my, my position on this. Um, the comment was made last meeting about um, Jeff went and took a walk through the community and Jeff, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but also, I mean, walking through the community and assessing what the community is like and comparing it to, oh, it's a quiet community, the business is vacant. So it, it's not, a, in my opinion, it's not an accurate representation of what's there um, because that lot is currently vacant. 
Um, but in Drew's presentation, he drew attention to the other commercial lots neighboring, and he, and he mentioned the Cook property, he also mentioned Oliver. But uh, in my kind of my research, there's also the landscaping prop, uh, or a landscaping nursery business right there next to the Cook property. And then just south of Bloomington Auto, there's the limited business to where the gas station used to be that's in the, con the CDO. Those are all remaining as they are. Um, and kind of in re reference to what was said about how this Wormsway property is being upkept, kept even in its vacancy and what it's available. You know, when you look at some of the other businesses that are vacant in the area, they're not being upkept, and the potential of them being uh, move-in ready for a, for a revenue-generating business to the community um, is not likely. When I look at the Wormsway property, I see it just, you know, ripe for the picking for a company and its location. That's really all I, my comments. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Allman. Mr. Garitas? Yeah, a lot of what I've got to say will, will be uh, similar to what I had to say in the past, in the past, in the past, in the past, right? So uh, this is a built environment. Had this, had, if we were looking at a, at, a, at a naked field, we would probably have a different perspective on this. But as we've heard, this is a very well-maintained property. I also walked inside the site uh, the Worms Way property probably six, eight weeks ago. Uh, it's fabulous. The detention facilities are in good shape. The stormwater's in good shape. The driveway's back there in good shape. The docks are in good shape. The paving's in good shape. There may be one spot where it's settled a little bit, but it is ready for a business to go in there because I think it's been so well maintained. And it's been maintained in expectation that something that was similar what was there before, which was a very, it was set up for very intense use with, with just the amount of trucks that could go in and out of there and the amount of traffic and the amount of business, the size of the buildings, the number of buildings. The buffer yards are well suited for what's going on. There are, there are coniferous trees. There are deciduous trees in the background. I also went through uh, Windsor Private. I've been went through Windsor Private multiple times over the decades. I actually, when we were staking the roadways and building the roadways, I was pounding the stakes in the ground to stake the roads, okay? So it is a, it is a nice area. We probably couldn't build that subdivision now because of the cul-de-sacs and going underneath the power line and the other things, but you still have a beautiful neighborhood. Uh, when I was there, I worked very diligently to see what the impact was from the roadways and not even what would happen tomorrow, but what it would have looked like back in the day when Worms Way was in operation. And again, the buffering and the, the juxtaposition between I-69, the investment that the public has put into that, the existing businesses, and then you've got a single family residential neighborhood, they're perfect. Nobody can predict what the best user is gonna be. We could all put a, a piece of paper in a hat and write down what we think the best use for that property would be, and we would probably come up with at least a dozen different answers, if not more. Uh, the, the, one, of the, one of the neighbors, and I thought it was a very good point, brought up the fact that the petitioner had, in, had invested in the property at, 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 at its own risk. Well, so did the neighbors of Windsor Private. You know, those, tr those properties have transferred back and forth, back and forth, since Worms Way site, and I'll just call it Worms Way because that's a business, this is a site, there is a distinction there. But both parties have invested in it and they've, they've kind of gone hand in hand and not to the peril of either as far as I can tell until now. Uh, I don't know, there's no way we can know who actually saw the property, who it was showed to, how it was showed, uh, if, if an industrial person would have called to look at the property if, if any particular realtor would have said, no, I'm not gonna sell it to you, I'm not gonna represent you. I don't know any of that. Uh, I think Mr. Carmen's example, when it comes to selling a one bedroom, one bath house in Windsor Private is probably a pretty good analogy. I didn't think of it that way. But I think that it, it behooves all of us to try to improve our situation and try to get the best value out, out of the investment that we've made in whatever we own. What that investment is and what that best is, it's different for everybody. It could be money, it could be 
proximity, it could be a neighbor, it could be a, a, a proximity to work, it could be a whole bunch of things. So again, this is a built environment. This is one that begs for a use in this county. It is an infill business. It, it's just that simple. And I don't know that there's anybody smart enough in this room to understand who that best user is. I just really don't. But, but this is an infill site. Why try to fit this somewhere else on a piece of property that doesn't exist? And it is such a very well maintained and set up piece of property for exactly what it was and, 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 and what it could be with all the resources around it. I, I just can't see anything other than trying to get this into a pre-existing business, general business, limited business, with referring to staff's recommendation or suggestion when the petitioner first came in. But uh, I, I wanna see something in there and I think that the, the property will speak for itself on what to get. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garitas. Mr. Morris? Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. I agree that this is a nice property and it would be nice to see something in the buildings, but my concern is that once it sells, there's no guarantee that the new owner is gonna keep it as nice as, as what it is today. And I think honestly, I felt better about the proposed PUD than I feel about rezoning this to PD um, just because of all the uses that would be permitted if I look down the, the chart of general business and limited business. So I, I think if we were seeing an offer put in on this uh, with a rezone contingent on it where we knew what the business was going to be, I would feel a lot better about that. But until we see something like that, I just don't feel comfortable uh, get permitting so many different uses on this property. Thank you very much, Mr. Morris. Um, I'm going to turn to my right now. And Mr. Enright Randolph, do you have any uh, comments? And or Yeah, uh, I jotted them down. Um, I really think uh, Bernie hit it right on the head that we all probably have a different idea of what the best use of this property is. Um, one thing I wanna bring up is the buffer yard. I think um, that was alluded to, but I mean, I, I was just looking at uh, the buffer yard and then the comments from uh, the public today and a lot of people talked about living adjacent or abut that property. But from my quick analysis, the buffer yard gives well over like 150 feet to a lot of those parcels um, that abut the common space of Winslow, or sorry, not Winslow, Windsor. And it's called Windsor Private A. Um, so. I know that one uh, person spoke saying their property does abut it, and I'm not sure if that was the one resident I could see that's to the south, but I wanted to bring some attention to that because I think the main reason of having that common space was to buffer for a commercial use on this property. And uh, okay, I finally got back. I started to go south, I'll get there. So to the north, from just some quick GIS measurements, it's like 121 feet to one of the joining parcels where there's a house on it. Um, if you look on the east, you're looking at 176 feet to 203 feet, give or take. So I, I'm, I'm curious of um, when they say that their property abuts that, does it abut the common space? Or are they unaware of the common space? Um, I did try to pull the most recent deed to make sure there wasn't an amendment to the common space so I wasn't speaking out of line. So it does look like they were planning on trying to mitigate some of the concerns of having a commercial space abut of residential space. So that, that, that's my takeaway. There are official records that um, depict this. So if I'm mistaken, there has to be some type of amendment I'm not aware of that has been recorded. Um, also, we, we talked about the, the I-69 and um, the condensation. I actually like that term a lot better than taking. But if you go south of this particular area, there was a lot of uh, taking of a, a, a business zone. Um, and that's where I just was. And again, I don't want to misspeak, so I'm going to just take a second to look down. I think it was 
light business. Um, yeah, light business by sample to the west of the interstate or to the east of the interstate and then uh, ER um, to the west. Anyways, my, my point being is um, we've already lost some of the, that usable area for commercial space along I-69. And now finally kinda, which I like the PUD better as well. Um, I thought that limited the uses. I don't like going towards the pre-existing business. The petitioner made a very valid argument. He just wants to be the tr treated the same that others were treated um, back then. But at the, at the same time, we're working towards getting rid of those. So, you know, I would have been way more um, inclined to support the PUD um, due to how many uses and being uh, recognized as a high intense use. I'm not incli inclined to support the pre-existing business. And I gotta uh, thank Jerry for his question because I was looking at this um, a little wrong until he um, had a follow-up question and it really clarified my understanding of what can and can't be done on this property. Um, th that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Enright Randall. Ms. Munson. Thank you. I wonder if the petitioner um, and uh, the Windsor private neighbors have ever had a discussion as to what would be acceptable to them as part mm -hmm. of a PUD, what type of business would be acceptable mm -hmm. to them as part of a PUD. Um, there have been a proposed agreements between adjacent property owners and a petitioner uh, that have been heard by this body. And I consider this uh, a possible way to have a successful PUD. Did you ever sit down and talk directly to each other? They have. We've asked them before and they did. And they did, yes. it, and it was not successful. It, well, they, the, um, not ultimately successful, but uh, the, they came to different agreements, and mm -hmm. uh, if I recall correctly, staff, you can correct me if I'm wrong, it just ultimately was not approved by the body, but they had okay. spoken. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, I have to think that given the impasse that this particular series of petitions has come to, maybe it's time to revisit that process. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Councillor Munson. Mr. Pittsford. Yes, thank you, Madam President. I've said plenty on this in the past, so I won't really, I don't need to go back over any of those things because they're all in the minutes. Um, I've been on this board for roughly 21 years. It took some time off, but came to it 21 years ago. Uh, I learned that the most significant role of a planning uh, board is to determine best highest use for a property for the best interest of the county. Sometimes that runs afoul of some neighbors. Sometimes it works in favor of neighbors. Uh, and that's always to be regretted when it does. Uh, Bob Callow was one of the best planners I ever met, who was our planning director when I came on, and he always said, I'm not for or against you, I'm for the ordinance. And I'm going to speak for the ordinance and say uh, what it said, and that's in the minutes. Uh, the zoning ordinance on this is a little confusing uh, because it, we have a, an appeal for pre-existing business. We have a comprehensive plan that indicates what this was supposed to look like when 69 was done. Uh, but we also have uh, past precedents set in action. BZA approved a variance for metal fabrication. That went nowhere because of the petitioner. This board approved a recommendation or recommended approval of a rezone to light industrial over the denial recommendation of the staff. 
with a unanimous vote of seven to zero. That went to the commissioners and received a three zero negative. So it was voted down. There are nuances in this that I can't determine what their significance is. I'm totally lost because I'm using the language. When I look at the findings of fact, it's been this way for 20 years, it's always clear. Property values tend to be subjective. The effect of the approval of the rezone on property values is difficult to determine. That has never changed in 21 years. Yet consistently, neighbors tell us, if you approve this, you're going to destroy our property values. There is nothing in the findings of fact that have ever supported that in 21 years. It has never changed. I'm gonna tell you where I come down on this. I think the opportunity for the best and highest use for this property has already been presented once in the form of a variance that the petitioner didn't act on. It's been pre presented a second time in a recommendation for rezone to light industrial that was denied by the commissioners. I have no recommendation on this. In 21 years, I've made one recommendation for no, or made one motion for no recommendation to send it for, forward to the county commissioners with no recommendation from this board. And that'll be my motion tonight if I'm the one left to make the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pittsford. Commissioner Thomas? I, I don't have anything to add from previous um, statements I've made. Thank you. Well, I'd just like to add something. First of all, I'd thank, like to thank Mr. Height for um, keeping his property so um, presentable and, uh, and for having been a, such a good contributing member of our business community. However, I am uh, still reminded by the special exception given to Worms Way uh, back in 1995 and the conditions of that exception and that was um, that you know very restrictive and even in light of those restrictions it seems as though um, the market seems just prime for some of the restrictions that are very um, particular to this property so I do believe that there are market opportunities out there for this property I also uh, am compelled by the neighbors. The neighbors um, have shown up uh, on multiple occasions, and I think it's a burden for them to have to keep continue to show up. Um, I think that this property um, has an exception, and we should operate within that exception going forward. I don't think that we should rezone this, and so my um, my. I guess arguments are in favor of what the neighbors are asking and that is basically a continuation of what they have become used to what they um, ha have lived next to and that um, no change to the zoning take place so that's what I would like to see that being said I'm going to turn to the members of the Commission to see if there is a motion I can make one. Yes, Mr. Morris. So for case REZ-23-3, I move that we waive the final hearing and forward uh, this petition with a negative recommendation to the Board of Commissioners based on the findings of fact, specifically due to its incompatibility with the Monroe County Comprehensive Plan. Thank you, Mr. Morris. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to send a negative recommendation to the county commissioners for REZ-23-3 um, and also a waiver of the final hearing. A vote in favor is a vote to send a negative recommendation. Edward Ullman. I'm sorry if I may, just for clarification. So a yes vote means that... You would send a negative recommendation. And a no vote means that... You would disagree or okay. yeah would like a favorable recommendation no okay jerry pittsford I, i'm not sure that was no. correct so a net it's a negative recommendation so he's voting no so that means yes okay 
Okay, so, just to be yes, sure. by voting no, he's he's saying he would okay. rather a favorable okay, recommendation. Great. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes, good thank clarification. Um, Jerry Pittsburgh. No. Okay. Julie Thomas. Yes. Margaret Clements. Yes. Tron Enright Randolph. No. Bertie Garitas. No. Jeff Morris. Yes. Cheryl Munson. No. Okay, the motion fails three to five. I'd like to offer a motion. Yes, Mr. Pittsburgh. Thank you. In case REZ-23-3, I move that we forward this to the county commissioners with no recommendation. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to send a no recommendation to the county commissioners. And I, re I, I also include in my motion a waiver of final hearing. Okay. My second stands. Okay. This is a vote to send no recommendation to the county commissioners and waive the final hearing. This is for petition REZ-23-3. A vote yes is a vote to send a no recommendation. Jerry Pittsford? Yes. Julie Thomas? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Tron and Wright Randolph? Yes. Bernie Garitas? No. Jeff Morris? Yes. Cheryl Munson? Yes. Edward Ullman? No. Okay, the motion carries six to two. Okay. Well, with that, I'd like to thank everyone for their participation in this process and to wish you a happy holiday and that the next hearing will be before the three commissioners and uh, they will make the ultimate decision. So um, thank you for spending your time yet again with us tonight. I feel like we're becoming friends. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Height, also for showing up. Okay. We're moving on to the last item of the agenda, and that is um, um, it's concerning North Park Area B3 Subdivision Preliminary Plat Lot 3, Amendment 1, and th this is a street tree waiver requested. This is the preliminary hearing, and a waiver of final hearing has been requested concerning one parcel on 14.53 acres in Section 25 of Bloomington Township at 2900 Nor North Stone Carver Drive. And this petition is SPP-23-3. So um, is this Ms. Cresselius? Thank you for reviewing this case with us. Thank you. Um, so as you, can, as you just stated, um, the property is in Bloomington Township. We're looking at the North Park PUD. So just familiarize yourself with this property. Um, we're looking at uh, lot three. So this aerial view is looking north. So on the upper right corner of the photo, we're looking at the intersection of the newly named Hunter Valley Road and State Road 46. The road on the bottom of the screen is West Woodyard Road. So slightly different angle. Um, these corner, some areas of this, um, uh, section of North Park PUD has been developed. So we have the new EMS location and a different health care facility. So the zoning for the petition site is North Park PUD. Adjacent properties are also North Park. We have a state residential one, RE1, uh, suburban residential SR. The petition site is currently vacant and undeveloped. Um, adjacent uses included our medical facilities to the north, vacant to the east, residential to the southeast and south, and vacant to the west. So this is a request to amend the preliminary plat. The preliminary plat was originally um, completed and platted in 2021. Um, so although the property does show a, a, a section of road, that right of way was not dedicated. That whole area is lot three. So this proposed amendment would accomplish three actions. The first is that it would dedicate right of way for North Stone Carver Drive Road Extension from North Lintel Drive to West Woodyard Road. Uh, number two is that it proposes construction plans for the road extension. And three, it splits lot three into two separate buildable lots that are bifurcated by the road extension. 
The proposed lots, uh, lot 3A is 6.22 acres with about five acres of buildable area and lot 3B would be about seven and a half with about four acres of buildable area. So per the North Park PUD section 8B22, it states a local road connection shall be made between the yet unnamed frontage road connecting Curry Pike and Packing House Road to Woodyard Road. So this connection shall be completed prior to any land use certificates or certificates of occupancy approval of 50% of the acreage and use area B. So in order to further develop this area, this road connection needs to be constructed. So this image is facing west on West Woodyard Road. Um, so just to note what we're looking at here is a 100 foot power line easement. Mm -hmm. So this request uh, includes a waiver of street trees. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the street tree waiver request is only for this portion along West Woodyard. So this, the new road construction area would have this, the required street trees on both sides. The original preliminary plat did have um, the same waiver request. Uh, it was approved. Instead of waiving all of the street trees along Woodyard, they required the petitioner to relocate them in the lot. So that condition still stands. For this petition, um, we are, it is just a waiver of all those street trees, no relocation, so a waiver of, of the street trees on Woodyard. Um, they provided findings for this request. Okay. Um, there will be sidewalks um, constructed along the new road extension and also along West Woodyard Road. So the petitioner states that street trees may cause damage to the electrical facilities when fully grown. <laughs> Uh, just a couple of up-to-date up photos of the West Woodyard Road area. So the subdivision approval agreement um, actually expired this year on March 23rd of 2023. So the petitioner is stating that they will continue to maintain that commitment to plant the original 24 additional trees proposed along the north and west property lines under that original plat. Um, staff is requesting, will require a new estimate and a new subdivision improvement agreement for that original condition. So again, the partial waiver request is just to wave the street trees along Woodyard. Okay, so looking at site conditions for the property, the site has frontage along North Lintel, North Stone Carver Drive, and West Woodyard Road. Um, 2016 thoroughfare identifies Lintel and Stone Carver as local roads, and of course, Woodyard is, is designated as a major collector. Um, the property is mainly slopes under 15%. Uh, lot three does contain a 16 foot e uh, electric underground line easement, which you can see in exhibit two. And of course the 100 foot electric overhead lines that we just saw. Um, the lots will have access to water by the city of Bloomington, electricity from Duke Energy and sewer through South Central Regional Sewer District. Um, the petitioners are stating that the, si the sanitary sewer infrastructure will not be extended with the roadway construction um, and they that's based on their saying, unable to predict the type of sewer service and infrastructure required for that future development. So just a quick image, this is for a, a screenshot from the North Park Linear Park Open Space and Stormwater Management Plan created in 2012. So it does designate some areas um, as open space and we also see a stormwater facility on this property. My apologies, that's not a stormwater, um, but it does designate this area as open space. Uh, what we are seeing is that there is a proposed uh, drainage basin in that general dark shaded area that would not end up, the basin would not be a regional basin, it would be just a local site basin. Hmm. Um, some comments from Stormwater, so overall they're in support of the petition. Um, they see no issues with, with the overall petition, but they are still working with the petitioner on the design of the stormwater facilities on site. Um, they will be taking, they, we got, just because of the tight turnaround here in December with the meetings and the packet, um, we did get the latest round of edits before on the day the packet was published. So um, Stormwater, oh, they probably have received some of those edits and we just simply weren't able to include them. Um, so they had some concerns about the drainage that's located in the right of way. Um, they are, have some, requested some more information about the basin that's on site and then they um, are going to be recommending that, you know, the, and clarifying that the pond will be the responsibility of the lot owner. 
Okay, just a couple of site photos. So the rest of the subdivision, um, although parts are vacant, we, stood, we do see sidewalks, it's paved, and has street trees located um, along Stone Carver and Lentil. So here on the screen, these are the proposed street tree locations um, along the extension. And then to the north, you can see the original required 24 trees that were relocated from the original waiver. So on the screen is the petitioner's waiver of, of uh, the findings for their requested waiver. Um, on the right-hand side is the just the survey from the, the Duke easement. So staff is, uh, it, our recommendation does have an additional third recommendation that's different from your packet. So staff recommends forwarding a positive recommendation for the North Park, I'm sorry, um, staff recommends approving that should say approving. For the North Park Area B3 subdivision preliminary plat, lot three, amendment one, and the street tree waiver request and the waiver of final hearing with the following conditions, which is one, extend the water main to the east-west property lines along Woodyard Road for future service to adjacent properties. Number two, provide a new estimate for the, the original subdivision improvement agreement for the original relocated street trees. And number three, obtain approval of the MS4 coordinator and drainage board for the stormwater management design prior to final plat. I would like to expand on number one just for clarification. Um, the petitioners will be extending a water line down to Woodyard Road. Um, because of this area, um, the, some of the adjacent properties, they're on wells that have had issues. Um, there's just general water issues on this part of Woodyard Road. Um, so in order to, we would like to, we were requesting that in order to approve this area and, and assist adjacent properties that that water line is then also extended parallel with Woodyard Road to the property boundaries so that adjacent properties could potentially connect. So does anybody have any questions? Okay, do members of the commission have questions for staff? Mr. Pittsburgh. Yes, I have just one question. The uh, site basin that you referenced uh, in terms of uh, uh, water management, is that such that it would flush after rain events and that that area would be usable during fair weather times? So it's not a deep rim basin, but it's a, just a low spot basin? That is a great question for, for the MS4 coordinator. I'm not totally sure. I believe Kelsey Fatonia is online. Is yes, hi, this is Kelsey Petonia. Um, Jerry, are you talking about the new proposed detention pond on the north side? Right. I just, I know that in some instances, I mean, it's just natural for water to pool in areas mm -hmm. and, and in fair weather, those areas are usable. Uh, many of us have those areas in our yards. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was curious as if this was going to be a high walled retention basin or if it was going to be sort of a low wall normal pool and rain events that would flush, for lack of a better word, and then be usable in uh, fair weather times? Um, yeah, it will be designed to only hold water immediately after rain events. Um, not sure how usable it would be just due to the size and shape of it, but um, it is within the open space area within a drainage easement. Um, so it would not be holding water during, you know, normal dry periods. So okay. So and by use, it. I meant uh, sorry, I cut you off there. But by use, I meant just it would become uh, an indiscernible part of the uh, green open space there. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? If not, we go to the petitioner. And um, sir, would you? You'll have 15 minutes to talk with us about the exception you're seeking. <coughs> Excuse me. My name is Jeff Fanu with Bynum Fanu Associates. Uh, I believe virtually uh, Marianne Valena of IU Health is also attending this meeting. Uh, we're here to represent them regarding this plat amendment. It's really to formalize a requirement in the PUD that 
than 50% of area uh, B, use area B is developed that we have to make this roadway connection. So we're preparing the uh, plat to be able to create the right of way uh, to allow that construction to happen as well as the construction plans are being developed to uh, uh, allow permitting uh, when the requirement's necessary. Uh, I don't really have we, anything to say other than we agree with the staff report and uh, I'll answer any questions you have. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions for Mr. Paniel? No? So when you say you agree with the staff report, that means that you agree to the conditions? That, That's correct. That, okay, thank yeah. you. I just want to clarify. CDU requires us to extend the water mains to our furthest property line, so it was, it was already something we were planning on. Right, there. okay, thank you. And do you know if the representative from IU Health would like to speak as well, or do you think? Oh, there's no one online. So, okay, so uh, does anyone have questions? or shall we just move to the public? And if, the, if there's anybody in the public who is opposed to this, you will have a chance to rebut this. But I think we're dwindling. Are there any <laughs> members of the public who would like to speak either in favor or in opposition to this petition? Please raise your virtual hand on Zoom or press star nine on the telephone. I don't believe there's anyone, so let's move back to the commission for a uh, discussion or a recommendation. I have a motion, Mr. Yes, Redding. Mr. Pittsburgh. In case number SPP-23-3, I move approval of the uh, preliminary plat amendment one and street tree waiver request. I also move a waiver of final hearing based uh, on the petitioner's request and subject to the following conditions. One, that they extend the water main to the east and west property lines along Woodyard Road for future uh, adjacent properties and that that be further extended to the uh, east-west uh, borders of the property. Did I have the orientation right? East-west? It says east-west. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, oh, there it is. Yes. Uh, provide a new estimate for the GPUD-23-3 uh, SFP-21-18 and subdivision improvement agreement to the street trees. Obtain the approval of the Northern, is it Richland? I can't read that part. N NS4. The MS4 coordinator. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Storm management, storm right. water the, management. The full content of number three as uh, presented. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my motion and I'm sticking to it. All right. I'll second. second. Okay, great. Yes, he asked right. for a waiver of final hearing. Yes. I'll read it. Go ahead. Okay. Now, it's been moved and seconded to approve SPP-23-3, which includes a street tree waiver and a waiver of final hearing with the following three conditions. One, extend the water main to the east and west property lines along Woodyard Road for future service to adjacent properties. Two, provide a new estimate for GPUD-23-3, SFP-21-18, and subdivision improvement agreement for the street trees. Three, obtain approval from the MS4 coordinator and drainage board for stormwater management design prior to the final plat. A vote in favor is a vote to approve with all the conditions stated. Julie Thomas? Yes. Margaret Clements? Yes. Tron Enright Randolph? Yes. Bernie Garitas? Yes. Jeff Morris? Yes. Cheryl Munson? Yes. Edward Ullman? Yes. Jerry Pittsford? Yes. Okay, the motion is approved, eight to zero. Well, thank you for your patience tonight and happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, I, we will adjourn, but I do wanna wish everyone happy holidays. Thank you for all of your good work this year, all of your good presentations and for your patience and indulgence in us and our, our feebleness sometimes. <laughs> so thank you for all that you do. We appreciate all of your service to the Planning Commission, so thank, thank you. you. Thanks.